Hello, thank you once again. We are getting there, almost done with the file storage and memory measurements. Yes, we have seen uh, the evolution of the sizes of the hard disk and the files, and the memory, the folders, the directories, because they are all equivalent. When you look at the hard drive or memory, just think of them in terms of files and folders. And the reverse is true. So computer processes data at the level of bit and it fetches data at the level of byte and then store data at the level of kilobyte and then from there the size evolution continues to megabyte gigabyte to terabyte to petabyte to uh, zeta uh, uh, exabyte and then from exabyte to zettabyte this is the biggest size of the file so far uh, we have yottabyte but we haven't got any file system that is of that size and we have brontobyte we have also what is called the geobyte all these are the sizes meant for research purposes and uh, for uh, the future generation studies now the question remains do we have enough space well <laughs> the answer is a big a big yes and no. There is a growing worldwide demand for data to be explored by data scientists, uh, researchers, artificial intelligence, big data systems, uh, which require a huge amount of data for accuracy. Um, in terms of having enough space, I said a big yes, but it can be a big no as well. Because right now we are entering in the world of big data systems, in the world of artificial intelligence, whereby we need a lot of data for the system to be actively or accurately intelligent. But currently we don't have any size bigger than zettabyte. And for us to get to the level of yottabyte, and uh, Brontobyte, we need to do a lot of clustering, which may take a lot of resources. So definitely we don't have enough space, but yes, we do have based on the current settings. But as the, con as the technology continue to evolve, we may need bigger and bigger space. And that, my friend, is the reason why I have a big yes and a big no. <laughs> so the current medium's uh, capacities are not enough. You know, in addition, the current systems are very costly. You know, they consume a lot of physical space, a lot of electrical power consumption, too much heat, and, you know, this necess necessitate a significant cooling system. A lot of carbon dioxide is emitted in the atmosphere in trying to solve the problem and limited retention time. So there is need for better information density, durable and energy, as well as cost-effective data storage with ultra density storage medium to meet uh, this exponential growth in demand for data. Obviously, according to the research, that is true. We don't have enough space. You know, many researchers are now trying to move from the physical data storage that we have to the natural storage, such as using the DNA. So they're trying to use DNA and some bacteria and proteins as the next generation information storage systems. Can you believe that? And that was uh, discovered by these guys. You know, they, they, are, they are doing a lot of research, this group of people, Lima Bachia and the group. And they came up with a paper in 2022 that it may be feasible by, 30, 30, by 2030 to actually, not even 20, 2030, 2025, according to their paper, that by then the physical medium uh, may be 
uh, interrupted by the natural storage, such as using bacteria and protein, to start another way of storing data so that we can reduce the problem of electricity, uh, carbon dioxide, which is being emitted, you know, in the atmosphere in trying to solve the problem we have with the limited uh, space. So the researchers are doing a lot of work to come up with uh, this new technique of uh, increasing the storage and the file system so that uh, we move away from uh, the file, digital file system to biological data storage in the living cell. Can you believe that? So human being will be working with data. So you will be working on the street carrying data in your cell. And remember, we have billions of people around the world. If everybody has some data in them, plus other animals and a lot of things, we will not run out of the space. And that is the new technology that is coming, my friend. So all of them will be aiming at reducing the cost, eliminating the need for electricity, the space. But my question is, my friend, I know the research is, is pointing at, at these possibilities, but nevertheless, I think we need to use what we have got now to organize ourselves digitally while waiting <laughs> for scientific breakthrough. I know it's coming soon and uh, you can do all your own research. I give you some of the references whereby you can go and read more about this discovery. Uh, you know, this, there's a paper that came with random access DNA memory using Boolean search in the archival file storage system. That was uh, actually a paper that I read when I was doing research uh, to produce this video. Uh, you know, the random access memory using Boolean search in the archival file system. So you can go to the research gate uh, where they're doing a lot of publication to find different kind of papers there. Another one is also about using the DNA as a universal chemical substrate for computing and data storage. So I'm just giving you this to show you that all the information I'm presenting to you is not, is not a coincidence. It came from the research and that is how I do my work. Everything I present to you, you know, is well researched. That's why I gave you these um, uh, these references for you to go and look at it for yourself. There's a paper also known as a ten years of natural data storage, and this is the one I referred to. Uh, this one, and they wrote this paper in 2022. So according to them, by 20. This, they say they approximately to 20 to uh, 2030, but in actual sense, according to some of the texts that they wrote, you know, it could be possible by 2025 that the DNA, bacteria, and protein can be used, you know, to start storing uh, data. So we are coming, you know, we are going to the era whereby, you know, we will not run out of the storage soon. Also, um, there's another guy, you know, I don't want to talk about it. Just go and read, go there and read. The DNA, memory, protein, microorganism, sequential analysis, encoding memory information storage, drive DNA data storage, natural data storage, biological communication, and natural hard drive are on the way for you guys. So my friend, that is it. Um, you can do your own research and see the researches which are going on and what people are doing to find an option to uh, solve the problem of the limitation of the space that we have currently. So thank you for viewing. I hope uh, this video has been uh, informative and I will be happy to see you yet again in the next video. Happy learning. My name is once again Samuel Ambrose Onen, your tutor for uh, computer studies. I'm a BSc 
an MSc holder of advanced computer science, and I specialize in artificial intelligence, and I am I am currently doing my research, and I will be very, very happy to see your comments on my work because that will motivate me even more. So please, thumbs up or down. <laughs> happy learning.